Welcome to Bajigur with Angrundi. I'm Gary Wiriawan and today we're going to talk about this ultra awesome lens. The Lawa 7.5mm f2 lens. Before we continue, this is just a quick reminder for you to support my channel by liking this video, subscribing to my channel, and to share this video to your friends and families. Okay, now let's continue with the video. So today I want to talk about a lens that in my opinion is the perfect wide angle lens, which is this lens right here. So this is Lawa 7.5mm f2, which is basically a proper rectilinear wide angle lens with a large aperture of f2. It is basically designed to use on micro four thirds camera system which includes most of Panasonic and Olympus camera bodies. Delivering an equivalent of 15mm in full frame, this lens actually behaves more like an ultra-wide angle lens. There are two versions of this lens, the normal one like the one that I have right here and the one that is supposed to be lighter which is more drone friendly. So I bought this lens in 2017, so it's already about two years since I owned this lens. I was attracted to this lens because it is a part of a very rare lens category in micro four thirds. What I mean by that is that this lens is a combination of six things. Small, sharp, lightweight, large aperture, non-fish eye wide focal length, and relatively inexpensive. There's not a whole lot of lens that fits into that category, so this Lawa 7.5mm f2 is actually very special for me. A lot of wide angle lens in this category is usually big and bulky, like the Olympus 7-14mm f2.8 or the Panasonic 8-18mm f2.8 to f4. Some of the smaller wine might include the Panasonic 7-14mm f4 or this lens that's filming me right now, the Olympus 9-18mm f4 to f5.6, but the problem with those lens is that they have relatively small aperture. Fun fact, this Lawa 7.5mm lens is actually as small as the kit lens that comes with most Panasonic body, which is the 14-42mm f3.5 to f5.6. I originally intended to use this lens as my dedicated landscape lens as well as my astrophotography lens because the combination of both the wide angle focal length and the large aperture of f2. However, as I started to use this lens more and more, I started to use this lens also for other things such as architecture, interior photography, environmental portrait, vlogging, and video work in general. So some of you might already know that this lens is a manual focus only lens which means it doesn't have autofocus and you have to adjust the focus ring to get into the focus that you want. And some of you might probably think that this lens probably sucks because it's a manual focus only lens but in my opinion it's okay to use this manual focus only lens because with its wide focal length it's actually pretty easy easy to nail focus. I usually use what is called hyperfocal distance when shooting with this lens. So I set the focus to things that are about 4 meters away from the lens and just leave it there all the time. So I know that everything between 4 meters in front of the lens until infinity is going to be in focus, even at f2. So how does this lens perform so far? So I took this lens on various trips with me to many countries such as Norway, to places like Honingsvak, Hammerfest, Tromso, Longyearbyen and some other places too, as well as Alberta, Canada, as well as Grand Canyon in the United States, and as well as Japan, and it performed really well. Back then, I always used this lens on the Panasonic GX7, which I already sold and replaced with this camera that's filming me right now, the G85. The lens is sharp all the way from f2 to f8, with the sweet spot being in between f2.8 and f5.6. At those apertures, it reaches maximum sharpness, maximum micro contrast and it has less vignetting. But even at the large aperture of f2, it has very little chromatic aberration, very high sharpness, very high micro contrast and this lens has proven to be very capable. There is a little bit of distortion present with this lens but it is very negligible. Usually with micro 4 lens, there are some software correction that is happening inside the camera 
camera body but since this is a manual lens which doesn't have any computer inside the cameras don't really correct for the distortion in body but nevertheless it has a very little distortion that is basically negligible build quality of this lens is very good it feels very substantial it feels very strong and solidly built and it is quite robust one really neat feature of this lens is that it has a 46 millimeter filter thread in front of it so I can attach ND filters like this or polarizing filter or variable ND filter or even the whole filter holder system like this I mean having the possibility to attach filter to a lens like this really opens up a lot of possibilities when it comes to photography and video similar wide angle lens with large aperture oftentimes don't have filter thread like this so this is really something that is useful for me there are some negatives when it comes to this lens first as I said this lens is a manual focus on the lens which means it doesn't have autofocus so you have to learn how to focus using the focus ring in the lens but as I said in the earlier part of this video you can just find the hyperfocal distance of this lens which is about four meters away at f2 so you just fix your focus at four meters in front of the lens and you'll be guaranteed to have everything in focus for from 4 meters all the way to infinity. The only time when you need to adjust the focus ring is if you're focusing to a subject that is closer than 4 meters. Moving on, the next negative is vignetting. This lens definitely vignettes at larger aperture such as f2 and f2.8. I personally don't find vignetting to be a big problem for myself since I like to vignette most of my pictures anyway. But if you want to get rid of vignetting, all you need to do is just to stop it down to f4 or f5.6. Alternatively, you can use Photoshop or Lightroom to correct for the vignetting. Next negative is flare. Because this is a wide angle lens, this lens will flare like crazy. The flare on this lens will show up on the corners of your image and usually it will cast a purple or red streaks along the image especially if you're shooting into the direction of a strong light source the solution to the flare problem is to adjust your composition and angle carefully so that it doesn't hit in the direction of the strong light source alternatively you can also use your hand to cover the light source from far away so that your hand doesn't block the lens last but definitely not least my particular copy of the Lao lens has some focusing issues this lens originally cannot focus to infinity so I have to open up the back of the lens myself and put some thin sheets of paper in between the rear element of the lens and the main housing of the lens to solve the infinity focus problem my solution works and I will link down below how I repair it in a blog post so you might wonder why don't I just send this lens back to Laowa under warranty to get it replaced or repaired well, I live in Indonesia and the problem is it's gonna take months to repair or replace this lens in Indonesia. But if you live in the United States or in Europe or in any first world countries, then you are fine. You can just send it back to Lawa and they're gonna replace it under warranty or maybe repair it. So yeah, in conclusion, I really love this lens. In the days when micro four turn things starts to get bigger and bigger, a lens that is this small and capable feels very refreshing for me. This lens really brings back the original philosophy of Micro Four Thirds. Small, lightweight, sharp, and relatively inexpensive. This is all that I want from a wide angle lens and I'm having a lot of fun when using this lens for photography and video. Also, this is now my main lens that I use for YouTube. So chances are, if you're seeing my recent new videos that I already posted, then you already see how this lens perform in video. Despite all the negative and the lack of autofocus in this lens, I can still highly recommend this lens for anyone who's looking for a compact, small, wide-angle lens with a large aperture. And in the future, I hope that Micro Four Thirds will start to come back to the direction of this lens, making things that are small, lightweight, sharp, high quality, and relatively inexpensive, rather than making large lenses and large bodies like they're doing right now. So yeah, that is all for today's video. I really hope that you find this video to be useful please don't forget to like this video to subscribe to my channel to share this video with your friends and don't forget to click the notification bell down below so you get notified every time I post a new video thank you and goodbye